welcome to our first lecture of our Sanitation Safety Planning online training course. My name is Leonela Barreto Gillon and I will be your guide as you acquire the skills, knowledge and resources to initiate, participate in and sustain sanitation safety planning processes in your localities. This first session is an introduction to sanitation safety planning in which we will learn about safe sanitation systems, the significance of sanitation for human health, the 2018 WHO guidelines on sanitation and health and its recommendations, and the definition of sanitation safety planning, its methodology and benefits. Let's start with the definition of safe sanitation systems. Safe sanitation systems are an arrangement of technologies and practices designed and used to separate human excreta from human contact at all steps of the sanitation service chain, from toilet, containment, storage treatment, conveyance, treatment, and end use or disposal. To be safe, a sanitation system must fulfill minimum requirements of design, construction, operation, and maintenance at each step. Also, a safe sanitation system is embedded in an implementation framework for safe service delivery that ensures effective planning, delivery, maintenance, regulation, and monitoring. Safe sanitation is essential for health, from preventing infections to improving and maintaining mental and social well-being. Unsafe sanitation systems have direct impact on health. These include infection and disease, including fecal oral infections like diarrhea, health mouth infections, vector-borne diseases. Besides the direct impact, unsafe sanitation has sequel, which are conditions caused by preceding repeated infections. For instance, unsanitary conditions have been linked to stunt growth, malnutrition, and impaired cognitive functions. Lack of access to suitable sanitation facilities is also a major cause of anxiety caused by embarrassment and shame associated with open defecation or sure sanitation. To understand the impact of sanitation on health, we need to understand the pathway through which sanitation influences health. We need to consider the intervention, which includes both technologies and behavioral change activities, as well as implementation, which includes policy, regulations, finance, organization, etc. These influence health via multiple intermediary outcomes. An important intermediated outcome is access to, uptake and sustain use of sanitation interventions be technologies or behaviors. These are assumed to reduce the environmental fecal load, which in turn reduces human exposure to fecal pathogens. Ultimately, this is expected to lead to improved health conditions and social well-being. Contextual factors can influence both the way in which an intervention is implemented and the way in which it operates to affect health. In order to understand how effective sanitation interventions have been in protecting health, the WHO commissioned studies that reviewed existing evidence. Evidence shows that sanitation has a positive impact on infectious diseases and well-being. Overall, greater access to sanitation is associated with significant lower odds of diarrhea and other infections. However, According to the studies, sanitation intervention have shown lower than expected health outcomes, leading to concerns on the quality of the implementation of sanitation interventions and programs. There are several reasons, including many interventions do not reach levels of toilet access and use in the community that are high enough to remove pathogens from the environment. In fact, according to the studies, disease reduction will not be detected unless the coverage of sanitation use at community level is high, about 70%. And 
And then many sanitation systems do not really effectively prevent contamination of the environment. As a response, the Doublet Show published in 2018 its guidelines on sanitation and health, which are an authoritative health-based guidance on sanitation that results in better health. The overall purpose of this guideline is to promote safe sanitation systems and practices in order to promote health. They summarize the evidence on the links between sanitation and health, provide evidence-informed recommendations, offer guidance to international, national, and local sanitation policymakers and practitioners, and present a number of tools and resources to ensure that sanitation intervention protect health. Based on the comprehensive evidence review, four main recommendations were derived for action by national and local authorities. The first one is to ensure universal access and use of toilets that safely contain excreta. This recommendation urges governments to prioritize the elimination of open defecation and universal access to toilets while planning for equitable progress. It also indicates that authorities need to strive to cover the entire community with safe toilets and use demand side and supply side approaches concurrently. The second recommendation is about safe sanitation service chain. It indicates that safety must be ensured along the entire sanitation service chain, which means we need to safely plan and design all the steps of the chain, toilet, containment, storage treatment, conveyance, treatment, and end use and disposal. The selection of the technologies should be context specific and respond to physical, social and institutional conditions. Incremental improvement should be based on risk assessment and management approaches, such as sanitation safety planning. The third recommendation indicates that in order to increase efficiency and health impact, sanitation should be provided and managed as part of a package of locally delivered services and broader development programs and policies. It emphasizes the need of efficiency and sustainability through coordination. The fourth recommendation indicates that the health sector engagement should be increased to ensure safe sanitation to protect public health. So what can we do as local practitioners to implement these recommendations? We need to ensure that we maximize health benefits of sanitation interventions. This means that we need to ensure that systems and services are selected to respond to the local context. That investments and system management are based on local level risk assessments along the entire sanitation chain. With this, we need to ensure that incremental improvements are based on local level risk assessments. So users, local communities, sanitation workers, consumers and farmers are all protected. So how do we do that? We do it by applying sanitation safety planning or SSP. SSP is the WHO recommended approach for local health risk assessment and management for sanitation systems. It presents a step-by-step -step methodology to assist in the implementation of local level risk assessment and management for the entire sanitation service chain. SSP ensures that the system is managed to meet the health objectives. Originally, the Sanitation Safety Planning Manual was published in 2015 to assist in the implementation of the 2006 WHO guidelines for safe reuse. However, the principles of SSP have been adopted more widely. Instead of focusing only on reuse, SSP is now used as a health risk assessment method for the entire sanitation service chain. Sanitation Safety Planning helps to maximize health benefits of sanitation interventions. 
It guides operators to prioritize risk management efforts to where it will have the most impact. It sets a plan for incremental improvements at each step of the sanitation service chain. It targets investments to the highest health risk and thereby maximize gains. It coordinates efforts of the many stakeholders along the sanitation service chain to maximize the health benefits of sanitation and stimulate policy dialogue and change. Sanitation safety planning brings back the sanitation focus to health. In total, the SSP methodology consists of six models. In model one, we define the priority area and the boundaries of the sanitation system. We also define the objectives and bring together the steering committee and the SSP members. In model two, we prepare the complete description of the sanitation system. In model three, we identify hazards, hazardous events, and carry out a health risk assessment, identifying at the end the highest risks. In model four, we select improvement measures that address the highest risks. We use selected options to develop and implement an incremental improvement plan. In model five, we prepare a monitoring and verification plan. Finally, in Model 6, we develop supporting programs and evaluate the effectiveness of our SSP. Carrying out the sanitation safety planning process will result in two products. A prioritized incremental improvement plan and an operational monitoring plan for regular monitoring and periodic verification. In summary, SSP is the WHO recommended approach for local risk assessment and management for sanitation systems. It helps to maximize health benefits and minimize health risks. SSP guides while prioritizing and targeting risk management efforts to where it will have the most impact. SSP can be used to coordinate efforts of the many stakeholders along the sanitation service chain, maximizing the health benefits and stimulating policy dialogue. Great, we finished. In this first lecture, you have learned about safe sanitation systems, the significance of sanitation for human health, the 2018 WHO guidelines on sanitation and health and its recommendations, and the definition of sanitation safety planning, its methodology and benefits. I recommend downloading the 2018 WHO guidelines and learn more about sanitation in chapter one and the recommendations and good practice actions in chapter two. You should also download the SSP manual and read the introduction. In the following lecture, we will start implementing the sanitation safety plan methodology specific Module 1 prepared for SSP. Thanks for watching and happy SSP!